lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host, Miss Kim Robinson. Yes, Lord. We need you. Hallelujah. They hate and they point and they talking. I won't fall back. I'm still walking. My head to the sky and I promise gonna keep on. Hallelujah. They hate and they point and they talking. And I won't fall back. I'm still walking. My head to the sky and I promise gonna keep on. Pew, searching for my purpose okay. The preacher on fire Got me focused in the service He said bless is the man I'm pressing through the fire It seems I'm falling back But I know I'm going higher Favor don't look like favor Look like a dead end You preaching today sir Please say it again Faith is what we hope for Speaking to existence At times I feel lost It's like I'm out of position Then my mind start racing Thinking about David And how he had one stone That dropped him to the pavement Now I hear the words how Joseph was abandoned, and even though he fell, his faith was still standing. I'm a tough enough and walk the miles that he chose. He can throw me in the den, but your miles will be closed. The word on fire, the anointing, I can hear it. I'm sitting in this role and I can feel his Holy Spirit. They hate and they point and they talking, and I won't fall back, I'm still walking. My head to the sky and I promise gonna keep on. They hate and they point. And I won't fall back, I still walk in My head to the sky and I promise gonna keep on The devil won't get me, cause the Lord already saved me I'm clutching on this grace, embracing all that he gave me At times I get weary, the storm means I'm tested I ask to be purged just in case I got infected Before I came in, I was listening to church He said we got the victory, I'm healed from the hurt I started feeling good, but we're the last throughout the week I'm being real, it's the truth that I speak I'm called to be chosen, I'm called to be great But I'm wrapped up in this flesh and my faith begins to break Then I remember about James 1.12 And how we serve the one and his name never fails I hear the altar call, yeah, he pulling on my soul I'm feeling recharged, I was back on my pose Was weak for a minute, but great as he Now I'm walking in my purpose and his favor on me they hate and they point and they talking, and I won't fall back. I'm still walking, my head to the sky, and I promise gonna keep on. They hate and they point and they talking, and I won't fall back. I'm still walking, my head to the sky, and I promise gonna keep on. They hate and they point and they talking, and I won't fall back. I'm still walking. To the sky and I promise gonna keep on They hate and they going and they talking And I won't fall back I'm still walking My head to the sky and I promise gonna keep Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are tuned in to carry the message. Amen. Come on, somebody. You just got through hearing my single that's, that's on all the digital outlets. I am Pastor Marlo Perry from Perry the Cross Church. And this is First Lady Alisa Perry, Perry the Cross Church. Amen. We would like to just before we go in, we would like to go ahead and start praying right now. We want to just do a prayer. Amen. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we thank you for all of this that you are doing in us and for us, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. 
God, we ask you to remove us completely out of the way, God, and allow the Holy Spirit to take over. Father, Father touch each and every listener, oh God. Yes. Open their heart to just hear what you're speaking on today, yes. Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And so many people, First Lady, we, we go through things, amen, and we feel like the Lord is not with us because we go through a period of time where it may feel like it's a disconnection. Mm-hmm. Amen. It, it may feel like it's a disconnect. And it reminds me of when Abraham was walking that journey, and he had his son walking with him, and he had to go to this spot so he could go ahead and, and, and present his son as a sacrifice because the Lord told him to do it. And while he was walking up that hill and, and to that location, you have to feel and, and know that he felt a disconnection because in his mind, I know me, First Lady, in my mind, if I had to do my son like that, I would be like, God, why? Why do I have to do that? And I would feel like a, a disconnect that's going on. But not knowing that you will have to go through an obstacle in order to get through your breakthrough. Y'all better talk to me. You have to go through some difficult situations in order to get to your breakthrough. So right now, I want to encourage somebody that that difficult situation that you're in right now is designed to be that way so you can get to your breakthrough. So many of us right now are in a situation where we don't understand why we are going through this moment, but this moment has to happen so your manifestation can begin. Oh, my Lord. I just want to encourage somebody. Before we get to the topic, I want to encourage somebody that's listening right now. They may be going through something. They may be going through some financial hardships. They might be going through a, a, a marital problem. They may be going through or dealing with something that's dealing with your health. The Lord is telling me right now that you have to go through that thing in order for your manifestation to take place. You have to go through the planting, go through your seed, going through a, a traveling down a dark road in order for it, it to come to the surface. You got to understand something has to die before it has, before it grows. Do do you understand that a seed? Oh my Lord, I feel it. A a a, a seed must first die before it begins to grow. Come on, somebody. So what you are going through now, you are now killing the faith issues that you had before, so your faith can begin to grow the more. You are killing your doubt that you had so that doubt can be pushed away so God can begin to move in your life completely. See, when you go through the dark stages of your life, there is purpose for your dark stages, and it's meant for your manifestations to now come to the surface. But first, you got to go through what you're going through. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Well, today, first lady, oh, my Lord, we were so excited about this podcast. Y'all have no idea. The Lord is expanding territory. I'm going to say it again, first lady. The Lord is expanding territory. Hallelujah. See, a lot of people will look at, at the glory, but they don't know the story. A lot of people will think that uh-uh, first lady and pastor didn't have to go through nothing. They don't go through nothing. The devil is a lie. Because we go through something on the regular. The Lord told me in, in my study earlier this week, hallelujah, he told me, he said that every season you will have to go through an obstacle. Every season has obstacles. Y'all yeah, better talk to me. Every season has obstacles. Just because you made it out of last season and, and you made it through those obstacles, that doesn't mean that the season that you're in now is not going to uh, uh, carry no obstacles. You're going to have to go through the obstacles in this season, too, in order for some things to grow. Y'all better talk to me. Because when the Lord takes you through a new season, that means that he's elevating you. So before you even reach your full potential in that season, you got to go through some ob- obstacles and some training. And the favorite scripture that I love is James 1 12. He said, Bless is the man who endures. Come you gotta on. understand that in order for you to be blessed, you're gonna have to endure some things. Yes. God wanna and he wants to build you up for your manifestation before you cross over. He wanna mm-hmm. make sure you have trust in him before he split the Red Sea. Come on mm-hmm. now, in the mighty name of Jesus. He wanna make sure you win on him. You cannot Come separate on. yourself from the Holy Spirit. You cannot separate yourself from God. Come on now in the mighty name of Jesus, because as long as you stay rooted in God and keep yourself rooted in him, he will move mountains on your behalf. <laughs> hey, man, glory to the God. That's my baby, y'all. That's my favorite. Come on, somebody. That's my favorite. Oh, man, I'm so excited. I'm sorry, y'all, but 
I'm so excited to be next to my favor and doing this ministry work. Y'all understand? Y'all don't understand how that makes me feel. This is my favor. I, I say this a lot, and we're gonna get to the topic. I say this a lot that I didn't travel many weeks to get to my road, and now that I found my road, I didn't. I didn't pick that road. I didn't. I didn't put that road in a in a delicate base. I, 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 I water my rose on the regular so it can begin to grow. I take care of my rose because that's what you have to do. Come on, somebody. Oh, Thank God the Lord didn't allow Whoa. me to be a weed. I was the rose. <laughs> Say, man, come on now. <laughs> come on, man. Let's go ahead and get into this. Hallelujah. So we have a we have a, a, a awesome topic this evening. Amen. Would you do the honors for a second? Amen. So we're going to talk about uh, separation. What happens when you allow separation to occur? Mm. That can be uh, in your relationship, in your business, uh, with God. Whatever you are doing, do not allow separation to settle in. Because think about it, when you're separating something, that means you're, you're, you're breaking it apart. You're, and now you got that space. Mm. And when you oh. have that space in between something, now you, there, there, you can put something there. So if the enemy see that you are separating things and you breaking stuff apart and, and, and all of that, that's his way of getting in and mm. cause damage and infections and to wow. destroy it. And um, that's why I remember, you want to? Go ahead, go ahead. Okay. The Lord told me and my husband, Pastor Wallow, he told us, do not separate anything. Uh-huh. And he told us that. Because at that time we had a, we had a Jezebel spirit, you know, in the midst of us. So he was letting us know. And I, one thing I love about the Lord, because we do not separate ourselves from the Lord, He put you on game. He lets you know, hey, this is going to happen. This is what's right here. This is there. This is that. So you can be aware. So your discernment can be on. So he told us to not separate anything. So once we stay connected and we stay connected to the power source, which was the Lord, that Jezebel spirit can do nothing but flee. Come on now, in the mighty name of Jesus, you have to stay connected. And I said this before, even if you're a single person, stay connected to God because the enemy, is he's coming. He, he, will, he will come and try to knock you off your post. Yeah. Come on, somebody. And when, and, and when my wife was, was talking about, you know about the the, um, the separation and how the enemy loves to see a separation. In, in, and I want to speak directly to a marriage. I want to speak directly to a marriage. Hey, Amen. The Lord had me on marriages while we were studying for this podcast. He had me on marriages, and, and you 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 know certain marriages they separate things. Yes. Hey, Amen. They they might separate separate their bank account. They may separate. They 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 do separation. And and and, and the Lord never attended. For intended for a marriage to be separate, nothing in your marriage should be separate. Come on, somebody. I got biblical. I got biblical scriptures that that back me up with this. Come on, somebody, because I know I, I hear a lot of people saying, "Well, well, I got this my money." You know, I, I make this, and, and the dude's like, "You, yeah, this is my money too." I make. But the Lord said that when you are married, that you become one flesh, that you become one. There's no longer two. That you have to have everything together because if you separate things. Indeed, the enemy will come in, steal, kill, and destroy. The only thing he needs is a crack to operate. Come on, somebody. The first married couple in the Bible, hallelujah, was Adam and Eve. They were the first married couple in the Bible. Come on, somebody. Was Adam and Eve. And, and, and there was a separation there, and that's how the enemy crept in, and he and he destroyed their, ho- their whole home. Y'all not going to talk to me. Come on, somebody. It says, watch this, y'all. If we go to, to the book of Genesis, come on, somebody, in chapter 2, verse 18, glory be to God, it tells us how, how the Lord said, how he looked at man, and, and he said that it's not good that man be alone. Okay. He said that it's not good that man be alone. And he said that I'm going to send you a helper. He told Adam that I'm going to send you a helper. Now, if the Lord intended for things to be separate in the marriage, he would have left Adam by himself to cultivate the field. But instead, he said that I'm going to send you a helper. Come on, somebody. Somebody who you can get along with, somebody that you can bring things together with, somebody that y'all can keep things as one. I'm going to bring you a helper, not so you can separate the stuff. I'm going to bring you a helper because I want her to experience this garden that I put you in, too. This is yours and hers. Y'all better talk to me. Everything that was in that garden was Adam's and Eve. Oh, my Lord, we're getting good here. We're getting good here. And as long as they would have stayed together, the serpent would not have had room to come in to separate. Men 
many people are separating things, first lady. They are separating things. And once you separate things within the marriage, that's how things begin to happen. Now, here comes the trust issue. Who are you talking to? Why I can't get your phone? What you mean? So I can't go with you? Why you got to go? It's, it's a lot of stuff that comes with separating. Would you agree, first lady? I agree. And also in Matthew 19 and 16, the word of God says, uh, you're no longer two, but you're one flesh. Mm. And therefore, let no one separate you. Mm. That's the word of God. So, like I said, with me and my husband, mm. you know, what I have is his and what he has is mine. You know, we never separate anything. He can pick up my uh, ATM card. I can pick up his. It doesn't matter. Mm. You know, we, just, we don't separate anything because we know if we separate, then that's leaving that opening for the enemy to come in and try to destroy anything, any and everything. We, we, we open, we talk about everything. You know, we don't keep any secrets. That's how you're supposed to be because can't nobody come and tell Pastor Marlo or Lisa said anything because he already knows that I said it. <laughs> You know, because we talk about everything. We don't separate nothing. We talk about everything, and we do what thus says the Lord tell us to do, and that's how we keep our marriage strong. Yes, you can. You you, you can allow. I gotta emphasize. You cannot allow separation to happen within a marriage. Come on, somebody. It cannot happen. Do me and my wife have disagreements? Yes, yes. we have disagreements. Every marriage is going to have a disagreement. The Lord got us on marriage this, this evening, and he got me on this, hallelujah, that we have disagreements. But, see, it's not, it's not nothing. It's, it's, babe, it's nothing. It's nothing. Um, you can't say that it's a perfect marriage. That, that doesn't exist. Uh, 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 exist. A perfect marriage does not exist. It does not exist. If someone says to me right now and they come up to me and say, you, you, they have a perfect marriage, I will know they're lying, and I will, uh, I will rebuke them back to the pits of hell because I know there is no such thing as a perfect marriage. Come on, somebody. Now, there is a such thing as an understanding marriage, yes. an understandable marriage. You have to understand your spouse, and when you understand your spouse, you know that no separation can be involved in the marriage. Oh, my Lord. Hallelujah. I'm not my wife. No, there can't no, no man come in because I'm understanding what my wife needs. I know what my wife wants. I know that because I, I'm attentive to my wife. I don't allow no separation to happen. When something is wrong, I know my wife. Hallelujah. I'm trying to tell you that when separation occurs, that's when the enemy comes in, and the enemy will distract you and then deceive you. Y'all better talk to me. See, when he sees that it's a separation, he's going to distract you, get you further away from your mate, and then deceive you. Let's take a look back at what happened in Genesis. Come on. Ah, my Lord. It says now, let me, let me go, let me, let me break it down a little, a little more, because I want my listeners to understand what's going on. Amen. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. If you notice about Adam and Eve, and it says in chapter 2, it says about the creation of Eve. And then if you go to chapter 3, it tells you how Eve was deceived by the serpent, right? Now, let me go back to chapter 2, and, 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 and a lot of people will argue this because a lot of people say that Adam was with Eve. We're talking about the separation. I'm right there. Stay with me. Hallelujah. We're talking about the separation. Hallelujah, of Eve and Adam. Now, many will argue and say that Adam was, uh, in fact, with Eve uh-huh, when, 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 when she took the fruit from the serpent. Ah, because it says that when she took the fruit and took a bite, she then turned to Adam and gave him the fruit. Oh, my Lord. But, but let me tell you, let's go back to, to two, and then I'm going to come back to revisit three, and we're going to see, we're going to uh, explain how this separation happened. So in two, it says that, oh, my Lord, that the Lord, watch this, y'all, I feel good, that the Lord created all types of trees to grow in the Garden of Eden. All of these trees, First Lady, had fruits. It said all these trees was beautiful. All these trees produced great and delicious fruit. Ah, he said all of these trees. Now, you go back. Oh, come on, somebody. And then it said, let me, let me go back. Hold on before I move forward. It said that in chapter 2 that Adam received a direct word from God and told him not to eat from the, the garden, I mean, from the, the, the center tree. Hallelujah. From, from, the, from the tree that was in the center of the garden. He told Adam not to eat from that. Okay, let's fast forward to 3. Oh, my Lord. This is where the separation happened. Because if, Eve, if Adam was in fact with Eve, and the Lord told Adam, 
uh huh, don't eat from this tree. And if Adam was with Eve, he would have saw the serpent try to tempt Eve from eating from the tree that the Lord told Adam not to eat from. That means Adam would have stepped in and told Eve not to, oh my Lord, I feel it, So Eve not to eat there. Get away from him. But since Adam was cultivating, Adam, I'm telling you, the Lord spoke to me, spoke this word to me. We're talking about separation. See, see, the Lord, the, the, uh, Adam was cultivating, meaning that he wasn't by Eve. Right? right? So while he was cultivated, that means that his back was where he turned to Eve while she's roaming. Come on, listen. Talk to me. I'm feeling good. So in doing that, remember that the, the serpent is what, babe? Honey. He's true. So he waits for the ideal time to sneak in and to devour of marriage, to devour of business, to devour of ministry. He waits to the ideal time to do that when you are separated from what you know to be true. Oh my Lord. He waits when you he waits for you to be separated from what you know to be true. Now Eve knew that Adam knew the word. The Lord spoke to Adam first about the word. So Adam was heavy with the word. He knew about this tree. So the enemy waited for Eve. The separation, this is the separation right here, y'all. This is the separation. He waited for Eve. Eve was over there doing what she do, and the serpent saw Eve. Oh, my Lord, I'm going to break it down. I love this, though. The, the serpent saw Eve. He lowered Eve in to distract her. Now, this is where the distraction to Eve, because she's separate from her husband. She's separate from the head. They are now separated and doing things uh, on their own. Y'all better talk to me. They're not communicating at this point. Oh, uh, maybe they had an argument. Uh, maybe they had a slight disagreement. Maybe maybe she got mad and left the house. Maybe he got mad and went over there to do what, what would calm him down. But whatever happened, a separation happened. So now the serpent sees Eve over there, first lady, calls her over there, tells her, go ahead, you can eat from this. The Lord, the Lord okay with that. She takes the fruit. She then takes it over there to her husband. Whom in which is cultivated. Come on, somebody. Whom in which is cultivated. He's working. He's not aware that Eve took the tree from the forbidden uh, for the, uh, forbidden fruit from that tree. So she comes over there and asks Adam, do you want something? I know you're over here working. Do you want a piece of this fruit? And Adam, seeing that that's his wife, said, you know what? I know you won't do nothing wrong. Let me get a piece of this fruit. And when he took a bite of that fruit, he realized that there was a fruit from the forbidden tree and their eyes was open. But he realized that the serpent had manipulated his wife because they were separated. Come on now. And the enemy will separate you too if he, the heat starts turning up. He can easily get in when things start seeming like, oh, it's getting a little hot. It's getting, oh my God, things start com- coming up against me. I, oh my God, that's when he can get in and just start worrying and the fear settle in. That's why God said, I do not give you the spirit of fear. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to stand strong on God. Think about when Job and his wife, there was a separation. If you really yeah, think about on, it, because the wife, she got fearful seeing what Job was going through and telling Job, yeah. hey, you might as well just curse God and die. What? Mm-hmm. That's not what you're supposed to tell your spouse. You're not supposed to stand in that thing, knowing that God is going to bring you out just like he did. He mm-hmm. Job stood on a guy. And and God gave him double for his trouble. And you know who else uh, made on, a separation? Mm-hmm. It was Abraham and uh, Sarah. Come on now. When Sarah, uh, God told Sarah she was going to uh, bear a child, and I guess the heat started getting turned up. She realized it wasn't going to happen on her time. They went and uh, Abraham got Hagar pregnant with Ishmael. Mm-hmm. And that was out of the will of God. Mm-hmm. You have to stay connected. Mm-hmm. God, do not separate yourself from God. Do not separate from the things God has placed you in. Mm. If God placed you in that marriage, do not separate. If God placed you in that business with your business partner, mm. do not Come separate yourself. If God placed you in whatever situation mm. God and ordained you to be in, do not separate yourself from it because you will open up a crack for the enemy to get in and mm. turn down. Come he on. goes to and fro to devour what mm. he can. Ooh, you know what, first day you're talking about separation. You know what came? I love that. I love when the Lord does this separation. Why was David tempted 
to go to the roof where Bersheba was. Bersheba. He was separated from what he was separated. Do something else. Come on. Because he was separated. He was supposed to be with his troops, yep. his people, but he stayed back and didn't want to go. And because he was separated from what God told him to do, the enemy had a doorway to step in and manipulate him and tip him with Bathsheba. Oh, my Lord. I'm telling somebody right now who's on this and listening, if you do not listen to the word of God, that means that you are separate yourself from the truth. You are separate yourself from the power source. And if you don't have no power, that means you your weapons are not loaded and you cannot stand up against the enemy. See, when you are separated from uh, from the word of God and separated from what God told you to do, the enemy now has power over you because your divine protector you have left behind. Oh, my Lord. You have taken yourself out of the outlet that needs to be plugged in. Y'all better talk to me. I ain't never known the light to work if it's not plugged into the right outlet. If it's plugged into the wrong outlet, it will not come on. That outlet has to be fully and, 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 and usable. It has to be operated. It has to be fully charged in order for it to send a signal to that light for it to come on. David, oh my Lord, hallelujah. David was not plugged into the right outlet, so he was not getting the correct signal that he needed to protect him. He was giving a false signal, and that's how the enemy came in Oh, my Lord, and manipulated him and got him to sleep with Bathsheba and then later on had Uriah killed. Why? Because he was separated from the will of God. We have to be like Jesus was on that in the wilderness. Come on now, when the enemy came and tried to uh, tempt him, saying, I will give you all of this. I will give you all of this if you just bow down to me. Jesus is like, nope. I will not take what you're offering because I'm so connected mm. to my father. Come on now. So we have to stay connected mm. to the power source and don't allow the enemy to come in and try to separate nothing that God has mm. given you. Mm, my Lord. You know, it brings me to the story, and we're still talking about separating. Hallelujah. I love when the Lord said first day. Right. It brings me to the story of the Israelites. And when they went out to send spies, and when the spies came back, and the spies told them, it was like, uh-uh, they're too big, the giant's too big. We can't, we, we're not going to be able to do this. And it says that some people believe, but Caleb and his spies, what was um, um, Caleb and Joshua? Was it Joshua? Caleb and, uh, hallelujah, I get the names uh, uh, mixed up, but I know it was Caleb. And, and they refused to listen to the spies' report. Why? Because they refused to be separated from what the Lord told them. Y'all better talk to me. See, you got to refuse to be separated from what God has told you was going to happen. See, many of us have gotten a word, and you have let an outsider tell you that God is not going to perform what he said he's going to perform, and that has separated you from the promise of God that he spoke over your life. And because you have now separated from God, you cannot get out of that hole that you have crammed yourself in because you have allowed the separation to take place. You have said, oh, my Lord. Stop allowing separation to take place so you can get the full, complete power of the Holy Ghost, so you can walk into your manifestation. You have to not allow separation to dictate your destiny. You are allowing separation to dictate your purpose. Stop allowing separation inside of your area, inside of your atmosphere. Tell separation, I got to be whole. Tell separation, I got to be complete. You cannot allow separation to take your blessings away from you. Many people are allowing these people to separate you from God. Family members, oh, my Lord. Family members, the word of God we was reading earlier, Matthew um, 18, 19, 18, and it says that if one part of your body, you remember that first lady? Go ahead, go ahead. Uh uh-uh, uh, go ahead, first lady. Hallelujah. He was basically saying that Whoa. one part of your body yeah, sin, cut it off. If your eyes sin, dodge it out. If your hands sin, dodge it out. And that's what me and Pastor was talking this morning. <laughs> it's people. If people, and, and I was just about to read Romans 16, verse 17, when it says, Watch out for people who cause division and upset mm. people's faith by teaching things contrary to what you have been taught. Mm. Stay away from them. God is telling you, and we were talking about the hands. If you can, if you have, you know how people say, My right hand, this is my right hand man, this is my right hand girl, this is my best friend. But if your best friend causing you to do things out of the will of God, yes. cut her off, cut her off. 
separate yourself from the people that's trying to separate you from God. Uh-huh. You know, you got to be mindful. God will, I mean, the enemy will use anybody to separate you from God. So you have Ooh. to cut that off. Ooh. Then it said, do not yeah. allow division. You got to have your discernment on and see these things coming because the enemy is very smooth. But God will quickly put you on game. So don't allow nothing or anybody to separate you from the word of God. Hallelujah. And you know what just jumped in my spirit first lady? Stop allowing married couples. Married couples. Stop allowing people who are not married give you advice. Oh, uh, uh, I ain't, oh my Lord, I'm trying to talk to somebody. If they are not married, how can they give you advice on being married? Come on, somebody. So you got to understand that you are allowing, see, here we go again, you are allowing people to bring to, to, to the enemy to use a person to separate you and your hubby or, your, or you and your wife because they haven't been married a day in their life, but yet they're giving you advice on how to be married. You married people, stop allowing single people, nothing against single people, but stop allowing them to give you advice about your marriage when they haven't been married. Y'all better talk to me. I'm the, I'm, I told you we are going to keep it real, don't carry the message. I told you that. Come on, somebody. You have to cut them off and work on your marriage. Go to God. It's a certain your marriage. Yes. Don't, don't let no single person. Don't let God about your marriage. Don't go to nobody unless God guides you to those people. Don't put everybody in Hallelujah. Because everybody will not forgive your spouse like you will. Mm-hmm. So you have to be real careful That's with it. who you are talking about your spouse to. Because mm-hmm. the enemy will use that. Oh, this is just my sister. She is married. Come on now. So, she and her and her husband, they doing good. So I can I can vent to her and her husband. No, because once you say, I forgive you, husband, your sister and her husband is feeling some type of way. You have to be real, 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 oh, Jesus, okay, <laughs> real careful with who you are speaking to about your marriage. God, well, God will guide you. Mm. God will guide you. Mm. You have to, to be, right yeah, to the right people. Mm-hmm. He guides you to the right people, amen. And he might not guide you to nobody. He might not. Hallelujah. He might just start downloading you, you know. Yeah. Himself. But you got to understand that people, that the enemy will use people. I don't care if it's your mother. I don't care who it is. The enemy will use people, the sin of the a divider in, 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 inside your marriage. Amen. Because a marriage is something that, that comes from God. And the enemy is attacking everything that God's name is attached to. He's, he's targeting everything that the Lord's name is attached to. You got to understand, stop allowing people to separate your marriage. And you stop separating your marriage as well. Y'all better talk to me. In Genesis uh, 2, in verse 24, part B, it says that, and they were one flesh. It said that they were one flesh, first lady. Hallelujah. That means, baby, if you hurt, I'm a hurt. I'm not go. I'm not gonna leave you and, and go and go shoot some basketball while you're hurting. If you down here crying and stuff, or something's going on, I'm not gonna leave you because we are one flesh. The Lord said, hold on, if your wife is hurting, that means you are hurting. You got to see what's going on with your wife. Because if you're hurting and I go and I go to the store and go shopping or something like that, now the enemy comes in. Now here come a thought that, that might come to my wife's head. He don't love you. He out here doing something else. This, that, the other. So you got to understand that any type of separation, we back, we're still talking about separation, family. Any type of separation, the enemy will use that against you. Come on, somebody. The enemy will use that against you. You have to, you have to be tied up to your spouse. You have to be attached to your spouse, attached to your ministry, attached to your business, attached to anything that God gave you. Come on, somebody. So the enemy will not come in and destroy that. To have an agreement, and if God do tell you guys to go with a couple, I mean, go to a mm-hmm. couple or a council or whatever, you guys have to have that agreement. You know, just say if God downloaded me to go to a counselor, I'm going to take it to a pastor, and we're going to, and I'm going to say him, God give it to me, and, and it might be a confirmation to him. So you got to understand, you have to do everything together. Do it together. Mm. He said one flesh. One flesh. He said one flesh. One flesh. I gotta. I want to keep on saying that because I want that to resonate. 
I want that to resonate. Come on, somebody. I want that to sit right there in your spirit, especially the married couples right now. I want to speak to the married couples. If you're married, I want to speak to you right now. You have to resonate. Let that resonate that it has to be one flesh, that you should not be separating things. You should not be separating things. The Lord did not intend marriage to be something that was separate. He wanted that to be togetherness. Y'all yeah, better talk to me. The reason why marriages are not uh, 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 flowing and not and not and not growing is because so many marriages are separated. They're doing their own thing. Talk to me right now. They're doing their own thing. I don't care who she talked to. I don't care who he talked to. We do our own thing and we come together. No, y'all should not do your own thing. It should be a togetherness. That's what's wrong with marriages, right? Oh, my Lord. We're still talking about separation, but the Lord got me talking on marriages. The Lord is saying that it's too much separating going in between marriages. That's my money. That's his money. Y'all better stop that. Y'all are together. Hallelujah. The Lord said that when man and woman marry, they become one flesh. They are no longer, it's no longer his, it's no longer hers. It's together. Hallelujah. That's why they got the same last name so they can begin to walk in the same beat, walk on the same, walk on one accord, walk on the same journey together. It should not be no separating. He said that we are one flesh. Flesh. He told Adam, first lady, hallelujah, it's not good for man to be alone. He said, so I will make you a helper. He didn't intend for marriages, marriages to be separate. And I just got to telling you what happens when, and me and my wife just got to tell you what happens when the marriage is separated. That the enemy comes in shrewd and cunning and gets y'all to play against one another. Get child apart, and then he tries to devour. I'm telling you right now, hallelujah. Now I want to I want to gear it to my single people right now. I want to gear it to the single people right now. If the Lord has given you something, if He has if He, if he has told you to start a business, if He has told called you to be an entrepreneur under His covenant, you are married to that calling. Ah, oh, y'all better talk to me. You are married to that calling. That means that do not separate the things that the Lord has given you to start your calling, to go forth in your calling. Do not separate anything because if you do, the enemy is going to try to kill you and steal, kill, and destroy and to separate you from your calling, from your purpose. Y'all better talk to me. Everybody is married to something. Oh, my Lord. That everyone is married to something, whether it be your spouse, whether it be a business, whether it be both. Yeah, I'm trying to tell you, the Lord said you're married to me, you're married to the word, you're married to your purpose, you're married to your destiny. You have to keep on holding on to me and don't allow no nothing or nobody to separate you from the word. Don't allow the divorce to happen. Oh, my Lord. You better not divorce yourself from the word. You better not divorce yourself from your calling. You better not divorce yourself from your purpose because that's what the enemy wants you to do, to divorce your, oh, my Lord, to get a divorce from your calling. Oh, I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to somebody. The, uh, the enemy wants you to divorce your purpose. Mm, you have to stop separating things. Stop separating things. You have to you have to walk in a togetherness. You have to be glued together, whatever it may be, whatever the Lord has brought in your path. You cannot separate it. You cannot divorce it. Do not abort it. You have to walk with it and, and, and glue it to you. You have to embrace it. That's the only way you're going to get a manifestation in whatever it is. Do not allow separations to occur. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you guys, you heard some uh, carry the message. I hope you guys carry this message with you because we not we're not supposed to separate from what God has done. Come on now, in the name of Jesus, so you could be like Joseph's wife. Come on now, you could be like Abraham and Hagar. You don't want those type of problems. I know I don't, so I stay rooted in God. I keep my focus on God. You have to stay. You have to stay focused. You have to stay focused on God. That's the only way that you're going to be glued to Him, because the Lord is the glue. Amen. The Lord is the glue. Without the glue, you cannot stick. Oh my Lord! Without the glue, you will separate. Hallelujah! I know some people use that that regular glue, and so many and some people like to use that gorilla glue because that gorilla glue got a a, a, a 
a nice little hold on it. Come on, somebody. See, when you're walking with God, that's that gorilla glue. Come on, somebody. And when you got that word, see, when you got the the, uh, the world on you, you use that, 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 that white glue. That glue don't really stick for real. But that gorilla glue is that glue that keeps you that keeps you stuck to the word, that keeps you stuck to righteousness, that keeps you glued to your purpose, keeps you glued to your calling. You have to be connected to God so you will not separate. And when I mean co- connected, you got to be in there for real, for real. I ain't talking because you read a couple scriptures. I'm not talking about because you go to some Bible study. You might go to church sometime on Easter. Now, now, you got to be walking this for real, for real, in order to be glued so no separation can occur. Y'all better talk to me. You better walk with that word on the regular. You need that word on the regular. Stop putting the word on the shelf. When you put the word on the shelf, you are separating yourself and the word. And here come that gap. Stop putting the word up on the shelf and take that word with you. You got to take the word with you. Take the truth with you. Come on, somebody. Take the word with you. Stop allowing the enemy to come in and to devour any situation that you're in because you refuse to take the word with you. You know what, first lady? People get mad, and they get frustrated with God. And that's why they, they, they get to the point where they don't want to take the word no more. And I think we said this early on through all our Bible studies. Amen. When we said that, you know, that first the Lord gives you a word. Amen. He gives you the word, and then you're going to have to journey to get to the manifestation of the word. Oh, my Lord. But see, in the midst of journey, journeying to get to the manifestation of the word, you allow a separation to occur because you are now frustrated because you are not, you, you're not receiving that manifestation in a timely manner that you think you should receive it in. Oh, my Lord. So now we're frustrated at God. Now we're mad at God. Now we say, forget you, God, because we think that it's taking too long to receive the manifestation. And the Lord is saying that you just got to be patient. Stop allowing the separation to occur and be glued to me and be patient. Because if I gave you the word, that means the manifestation of the word is not too far behind. But you got to trust and believe that there will be a manifestation of the word. Stop allowing separation to occur. Then you got those people that seen you doing the work from the Lord, and they not even understanding, Pastor. Come they on. don't understand yeah. what you're doing. So now they're talking against what you're doing. And like the, the Lord That's said, it. that you will not, the people of the world will not understand what Come you on. are doing when you're in Christ. So now they're talking against you. And now you're looking at what they're saying. Your focus is off of what God is doing. Yeah. Now you're separating yourself for what the journey God has you on, and you will miss it. You don't want to miss the blessing by you just focusing on what the, what the enemy is causing people to say. Yeah. Because like we said, his job is to get you off of anything that God has for you. And he's so Come on, baby. Y'all. Yes, and, I, and to go back to, like I said, we, we had to encounter that Jezebel spirit. It was sneaky and smooth. Come on now. It was so sneaky and smooth. Come on and now. if I would have just turned left, mm. that enemy would have devoured. Come on mm. now. Like if pastor would have just turned left, that enemy would have devoured. Mm. But if we stay focused and we stay connected mm. and when God starts speaking that that's what it was, we locked together and we devoured that spirit. That spirit has oh, a place. My Lord. You we cannot separate yourself from what God has called you to do because the enemy and you have to stay firm. Oh. Pastor, you have to stay firm. Come on firm. now. You, you have to stay firm. You have to stay firm. Yes, Lord. That you don't have to always be on your knees and pray. You can walk around and pray. Come on. And that's Hallelujah. why you're connected because the enemy cannot Ooh. get you. If he see you off mm. by a little bit, go turn ballage. So don't separate yourself at Come all. On. Before I leave the house, Pastor, I'll be praying. Lord, in my head. He don't need to be knowing, but I pray in my head. When we go into the store, <laughs> I pray. Come you know, on. I'm always yes, you do. to the Lord. <laughs> Pastor did it. Yes. One time we almost got into a car crash. Remember this mm-hmm. yeah. Because I started praying in my head. He didn't know that. Mm-hmm. But the yeah. car had just missed us. We cannot remove ourselves uh, from God. We cannot mm-hmm. just touch ourselves from God because mm-hmm. therefore we're separating ourselves and now we're leaving that crack for the enemy to come in. Mm-hmm. We got to always good. stay connected to God. That's good. First lady, when you, when you were talking, you said that we locked. Oh, my Lord, that did something to me. You said we locked up. You said we locked up. And in the, in the Bible, it says that one can be defeated. 
It said, but when two stand back to back, y'all better talk to me. Talk to us under here. When when two stand back to back, it said that you can see one coming from that way and that way. It said that three is even better because uh, it's not to, you cannot uh, tear a three braided cord. Uh, come on, somebody. They, and when you are together, oh, my Lord, when you are together, when you are together, oh, my Lord, when you are with God, when you are with God, Oh, my Lord, nothing can come against you. Nothing can beat you down. Nothing can tear you down. Nothing can get you from getting your manifestation. When you are together with God, nobody can come between you. Nobody can tell you you away from your purpose. When you are together with God, oh, my Lord, hallelujah, I come to encourage somebody right now. You got to be together with God in order to get what God has for you. Stop allowing people to tell you that you're not smart enough. Stop allowing people to tell you that you're too old. Don't allow nobody to tell you that you're not good enough. You better stop listening to these people. Stop listening to these vision killers. They are trying and sent by the devil to separate you from your purpose. The Lord has said that when you are together with me, you ain't got to worry about nothing. When you are together with me, I got a fence that stacks up around you that nobody can tear down. When you are together with me, Oh, my Lord, do not allow the separation to occur. Amen. Oh, I feel like I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. I feel it. Glory be to God. Right now, I just, before we, before we, we end the podcast, amen, this has been such an amazing time. Hallelujah. Oh, my Lord, I feel like, I feel like preaching. Hallelujah. I feel like preaching. If you do not have a church home, amen. And you would like to be a part of a church. Hallelujah. We are at 6614 West Florida Avenue. That's in um, Jennings. That's in Jennings, right? That's in Jennings. Amen. If you do not have a church home, please look us up. I am Pastor Marlo Carey. This is First Lady Alicia Carey. This is my favorite right here, y'all. This is my baby. Hallelujah. But right now, I just want my wife to tell you about her book. If she can, just tell her about your book, First Lady. Amen. I am an author as well. Um, my book, Prison of the Mess, is on Amazon.com. You guys can go on there. It's $15. Or you can reach out to me. I actually just gave my last book away today. Amen. So I will be ordering more books. If you guys want to wait until I get more, you can, or you can order it off of Amazon. Amen. What is your What is your book about? Just give me a brief uh, illustration about your book. Okay. My book is about this past for me growing up, not feeling uh, pretty enough due to family members calling me ugly. Then I ended up jumping from relationship to relationship, mm-hmm. you know, just to fill that void of not having my father in my life. Ended up in an abusive marriage where he almost took my life. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's just a lot. You guys can get the book and read more. Amen. So, Amen. so you, so what you, what you were saying, and we're gonna create clothes. You just said something in there. You, you almost took your life and all that stuff right there. But in the midst of it, you wouldn't really never separate it from God. You know what? When I was in the uh, in that situation, uh-huh. I wasn't walking with God at all. Uh-huh. But God had me. He had you. He had me. You know, and that's what I love about the Lord because when you don't have God, He still has you. You know, mm-hmm. and that's because of my grandmother's prayers and other prayers that went forth, my spiritual mother prayers, other Amen. prayers that went forth had me. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory be to God. But well, we want to thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. We want to shout out Kimmy Robinson and yeah. Asian Radio. We appreciate it. We appreciate this opportunity. We are yes. so honored. Glory be to God. We are so humbled. Yes. Amen. To be a part of the family and, and to have a, a podcast. Amen. We want to thank you guys for coming in to carry the message. Amen. Well, we well, we, well, we will keep it real with you. Amen. Yes. We will have a word from the Lord and we will always keep it real. Amen. So, again, thank you guys. For two of the to carry the uh carry mess. I was gonna say carry the cross church. Uh y'all gotta excuse me, that's that pastor coming out. I was gonna say carry the cross church. Thank you for tuning in to carry the message. We love you guys. Until next time, be blessed. Amen. Talk, talk.
check the way I walk. Then set free, cause my father paid the cost. No, I'm not perfect. God just forgave me. Got a new swag, praising Christ like I'm crazy. This my Christ swag. Yeah, my Christ swag. Yeah, this my Christ swag. Okay, my Christ swag. Yeah, this my Christ swag. Yeah, my Christ swag. Yeah, this my Christ swag. My Christ swag. Yeah, yeah, I'm from the streets. South of the arch, man Where I used to drink, roll up and used to spark, man Now I got my head straight Shining like a million bucks Christ elevated me Going past the ceiling, bruh St. Louis did it Die Squad t-shirt Homie, how you doing? Pleased to meet you, this my rebirth Addicted to the word It's pumping through my artery Faith on the meal The swag is a part of me Now my glow bright Souls been redeemed Covered in the blood No shower, cause I'm clean Done playing games Rid of the Xbox, almost flatline, but Christ made my chest pop, walked on the edge, the devil made me wobble, Jesus took the wheel, fast forward, full throttle, still in the hood, got that street slang, mixed with the spirit, it's a G thing. Deep high tall, tall, check the way I walk, walk. Then set free, cause my father paid the cost. cost No I'm not perfect, God just forgave me Got a new swag, praising Christ like I'm crazy This my Christ swag, yeah My Christ swag, yeah uh-huh. This my Christ swag, okay yeah. My Christ swag, yeah God squad, my bruh Christ swag, yeah. My Christ swag, yeah uh-huh. This my Christ swag Party, yeah. My Christ swag, yeah Look. Uh, my whole style come from Christ yeah. So own it, no sir, you can't put a price Like white on rice, I got his blood on me To be honest, I just care about my guy, homie And if I'm only living for him It don't really even matter what y'all think of me nah. Opinions, you can let them be I'm killing it, I let them see The old me is gone Keep oh. the demons on my heart Then Christ found a home yeah. No more Patron or Nitrous I might just give God a praise with my best He's high, yes, glory in here, hallelujah, yes sir, put my trust in the Lord, I ain't having no fear, no I don't have a care, besides pleasing my father, tell any hater you see man, don't even bother, cause Jesus is my medicine, I ain't never hurting, catching waves of his glory, man I'm Christ swag serving, yeah. I talk, talk, check the way I walk, walk. then set free, cause my father paid the cost. cost, no I'm not perfect, God just forgave me, Got a new swag, praising Christ like I'm crazy. This my Christ swag, yeah. My Christ swag, yeah. Uh-huh. This my Christ swag, okay. Uh-huh. My Christ swag, yeah. This my Christ swag, yeah. My Christ swag, yeah. Uh-huh. This my Christ swag. God squad. My Christ swag, yeah. Lie, uh, okay, you get it from my father uh-huh. Head to toe, swinging on that word, that's the motto yeah. Used to be an up or down, flipper like the lotto uh-huh. Roll with big drink and ST, old squad uh-huh. though uh-huh. Now I'm aiming at the world with that blessed go yeah. Hard repetition, stay flexing, holy rollers know uh-huh. When you see that light shine, this ain't baby doe He ain't got a VVS on him, what a freak show uh-huh. nah. No, but I'm close with my father though nah. I ain't Leroy, but the boy got a lot the glow took a whole lot of land out to kill his ego. Uh-huh. Missing my whole purpose like Shaq with some free throws. Uh-huh. If you rap in vain, can't edify the people. Uh-huh. Swag on 100, gaining speed, got the yo's flow. And I'm top flow, uh-huh. reaching for his glory. You think I got some swag? Christ the one that poured it on me. I talk, talk, check the way I walk. walk. Then set free, cause my father paid the cost. cost. No, I'm not perfect. God just forgave me. Got a new swag, praising Christ like I'm crazy. This this my Christ way, yeah. My Christ way, yeah. Uh-huh. This my Christ way, okay. My Christ way, yeah. This my Christ way, yeah. My Christ way, yeah. Uh-huh. This my Christ way. My Christ way, yeah. Mm-hmm.